Okay, so I've mentioned the OpenCom Excel several times on this channel, but I haven't ever actually gone into depth about what it is and how it can be used. So today I'm going to be going over this from the very basics and explaining um, physical utilization of it and how it can benefit you as a person. So the Arnold platform is what the OpenCom Excel is based on. This is a project by uh, Mark, which effectively wanted to, it was designed to create a digital radio transceiver which can work on bands which are usually used for IoT communications and things like this. Well, that's what it started out as anyway. So it's effectively a radio which you can use yourself in an unlicensed band, meaning that you don't have to go to a government and say, can I, um, you know, can I pass an exam and pay a license fee? Um, in order to use this band. It's completely unlicensed, so it's totally free to use. There are regulations on it, like airtime restrictions and things like that, uh, which I'll go over a little bit later. Um, but uh, you can you can utilize this band even with um, a couple of restrictions on transmission power and things like that as well. So this is the original R node that Mark made, and you can see it's a little handheld one. It's much smaller than the OpenCom Excel itself. The original R node was only working on um, the uh, older Semtech chipsets, so these couldn't support as high data rates as the chipsets that we support now within the project. Uh, but this was the starting point, effectively, for the whole project. So what I did is I took this project and extended it in order to add um, a load of other different features, effectively, and support for a load of different boards. So what I started out with doing was adding support for the um, the Rack 4631, which is the chipset which powers this board. I won't get too technical, but basically it's a lot more power efficient um, and it can last a lot longer on battery because of that. There were some other things as well. There were more powerful chipsets that we could utilize, more, more um, more modern chipsets that we could utilize and in addition I also wrote uh, I also added support for chipsets which actually utilize the same band as Wi-Fi and this allows for much much higher data rates and obviously this is what the OpenCom Excel ended up as within this great looking enclosure um, and with the battery bay on the back so that you could use um, 18650, the little vape batteries um, in the back of it for lots of power. So in terms of how something like this can be used practically, say for example there's you and your friend and you want to be able to communicate in an, in an off-grid manner. You don't want to use the existing cell towers um, or anything like this. All you need on both sides is either an OpenCom Excel or you can also communicate with an R node through an OpenCom Excel. They're both interoperable. So you obviously need one on each side. It's like a digital walkie-talkie. So if you've ever used a walkie-talkie before, you'll know that obviously you have to be relatively, well, I say relatively close to each other. You sort of need to have line of sight, but it can go through um, some buildings and things like that, especially if you're within the same area. And um, you both need to have one, and they both need to be tuned to the same frequency, things like this, which you can do with the application supporting the OpenCom Excel. And say you're here, for example, and you want to communicate with your friend, you want to send them a picture. So you have your computer here that's connected up to um, your OpenCom Excel. And what's going to happen is you're going to attempt to send it to your friend. So it's going to offer the picture to your friend. And because you're both on the same frequency, the radios are able actually to communicate with each other and there's a link between you. And he's connected his OpenCom XL to his mobile phone. And his mobile phone is going to respond and say, yes, send me the picture. And then they're going to go back and forth, back and forth. You're going to send the picture in chunks and it's going to confirm that it's got on it. And continuously the, um, the sent percentage on your laptop is going to increase as more of the image is sent and arrives at the other side. So there's various different um, 
well, there's there's two different modems and various different sort of configuration settings that you can use on them. So there's the high data rate modem, which operates in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And this one can go theoretically up to, well, 203 kilobits per second, but in real world usage would be something like 140 or something similar. And bear in mind, this is without anyone else using the same frequency and things like this. So this is the absolute best that you would be able to get. Currently, more development is required. Um, the speed that we're reaching at the moment is about 69 kilobits per second. But that's still fairly fast for this band. And for this kind of uh, this kind of radio, so on the eight six eight frequency, which is the frequency of the lower data rate modem, um, this is able to get up to, well, legally about fifteen kilobits a second. Oops, <laughs> spelled that wrong. Kbps or 30 depending on which frequency you're using because in the UK some of the regulations are different on different frequencies so you can get 30 of the absolute best 15 is probably normally what you're going to be going to get um, and then as you increase the range settings on uh, the radio your range will increase so you'll be able to communicate over longer distances however the uh, the data rate is going to go down. So for one practical example, if I go over to this tab here, I have a test that I did with my friend. And so we communicated over this coastline in Cornwall. And this is about 9.2 miles, the distance between us. When I configured the device, it was configured to use the low data rate modem. We couldn't communicate over the higher data rate modem over this range because it has um, it has a lower range so a higher data rate but a lower range so that's why I've combined the two of these which is the first of its kind into a radio like this so that it can switch between them and use the one which has the best um, link I suppose between the two sides so over 9.2 miles um, and this is the the computer my friend had set up. I had, this, I had it set to a spreading factor of 7, so the link speed was 5.47 kilobits a second. And by modern standards, this is incredibly slow. And indeed, it is incredibly slow. <laughs> but the obviously, the difference with using something like this is that you're running it completely by yourself. All of the information that's sent is encrypted. You don't have to pay a subscription or a service fee to anybody. You literally just have to power the radio and be within range of each other and you can communicate. So it really is as simple as that. Even though it's 5.47 kilobits a second, because of the way that a lot of the software has been built around um, the, the Arnode platform, a lot of the software that we use it and uses reticulum will be a lot more bandwidth efficient. So, for example, images before they're sent, they're compressed. Um, so my friend sent me 240 kilobyte file. This is an image that he sent to me, and that took a couple of minutes to send over. And when the image came through, it looked brilliant. Um, it was as if he sent it to me over, you know, WhatsApp or whatever, <laughs> well, whatever spyware people use. Um, so it works incredibly well as a form of communication. Texts are absolutely perfect for something like this because they're quite small, so you can send them and they basically arrive immediately. It takes probably less than a second for it to be confirmed and for it to arrive back to you, depending on how far away the person is, obviously. But um, yeah, incredibly quick. You can also browse websites and things like that with uh, applications such as NomadNet or Reticular Mesh Chat, which we'll be talking about uh, later on on this channel. But what should be remembered is that even though these speeds look low um, in the modern understanding of communications in the internet, what you should remember is that a lot of the internet is actually incredibly inefficient in the way it's laid out. 
Like, I'm, I'm sure everyone will be able to relate to uh, when you open a recipe website and there's like 12 ads that come up or um, something like the Daily Mail and it's got low, all those clickbait ads coming up through all the articles and there's videos that are playing on the side. If you imagine how much, um, how much bandwidth that's using to actually download all of those images and all those trackers and everything else that's being loaded on that page that you don't even want there, it's an annoyance to you, you don't even want it to be there, um, then it makes more sense, oh yeah, well, if we just sent the text, the thing that the person actually wants of the, the article, you can save an awful lot of space. You don't need all these fancy graphics and all these videos playing in the background, which are actually just a nuisance, really. No, nobody nobody really likes them. If you like watching ads, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, um, that's the background of that. Um, and that's generally how communication uh, works with this system. There's going to be uh, more videos in the future where I'm going to be going over real practical examples of how these things can be used. But the main thing that you should take away from this video is that the the OpenCom Excel effectively allows you to run your own internet without needing the permission of anyone else to be able to communicate. Nobody else can see what you're saying. It's all encrypted when it's being sent and you can get your buddies to all communicate and nobody is able to censor you, ban you from Instagram or any of this, <laughs> any of this nonsense, you know. You, you're not going to have to worry about what you're saying because you can speak completely freely because nobody else is seeing and vetting what you're saying. So yeah, that's everything. Um, bye.